I will straight away uh, come uh, to the panelist. So, uh, everyone is having an idea nowadays, and we have discussed, the Honorable Minister also have discussed that uh, we have lots of funds available in the market. But whether to procure that fund for the next level of expansion of your ideas, first you need to understand whether the idea is sustainable in the market or not. So keeping that in mind, I have a diversified, uh, you know, kind of a uh, panelist with me. Uh, three people who are already have done it, and the guy who is having the money bag with us. So uh, I'm having with me uh, Girish, who is uh, the CEO and founder of MacDigital. I have Amruta, who is trying to build in an ecosystem of student community in this country with campus time. Then there is Bharat, who is trying to compete with some of the global biggies in terms of creating an ecosystem, online ecosystem, in terms of providing artists and the designers a platform. Uh, then I have Abhishek, who is having the money bag and who is from T Labs. So uh, we have 20 minutes. Our discussion is restricted now to 20 minutes. We are between the lunch and the people, so we need to be really fast. So I'll start with Girish. Uh, Girish, uh, when you had the idea, like we were having a discussion in the morning, so what actually prompted you to have that particular idea that you have really uh, talked to the global stage, and then how you went on to further expansion and how you got the funds? See, our, our case was a little unique because we already were running a software company and we already were running a magazine in print. And at that time when we wanted to expand our magazine into a global uh, kind of footprint, we decided to make an app for the magazine. And uh, within, uh, that was in 2009, when the iPhone was very small and there was no iPad. And uh, when the iPad launched, the same magazine app uh, looked so nice and gave the entire feel of the magazine. So. It prompted us to say, you know, this is a new device, there's a, something new out there. So we said that within a year, we had about uh, one lakh downloads of our magazine, which only in print is only 85,000. So uh, we realized that there's a big need in the market for something that is uh, in your hand, you don't have to carry, the paper is not being wasted. So instead of one magazine, we decided to make a platform for all magazines in all parts of the world. So that's how we kind of came about the idea, because we already had the tools and the technology, and we're trying to solve a real-world problem of uh, reaching the publishing published magazines to audiences all over the world, rather than, you know, uh, just making an app which uh, uh, didn't have much of a need at that time. So mo ours was more of a need-based app at that time, and now we are, the idea is to evolve it into a reading destination where you can read magazines, you can read articles, you can read news and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, need-based. Amruta, what has prompted you to start uh, an ecosystem of students in this country when we have all the additional support system like, say, uh, Snapchat, which is not that popular here in this country, like we are having a discussion in the morning. Uh, WhatsApp, we have Facebook, Twitter, all this, you know, um, social networking platforms or you can say um, instant messaging platforms. Why social um, campus time? Yes, certainly. So, in fact, uh, I have been in the edtech space for the last eight years. So, uh, even I as a student, when I was studying, I actually faced this problem. Uh, because, say, I, I was in computer science, I was stuck with a class of, say, 40 students. I couldn't talk to, say, somebody in architecture, for example. So, uh, and what happened was, when I got this idea, say, sometime last, uh, last year, March, uh, I, I really thought this is something which is a pressing idea and something that we, I can solve it in, here in India. Because when you look at, uh, say, universities in US and in the West, uh, they do have their own platforms, mobile apps uh, for students to uh, sort of connect and interact. Uh, so when I look back here in India, we didn't have anything, any sort of that. And it's a fun app. Uh, so I, I actually went about and spoke to more than 100 students, uh, say my cousins, their friends, uh, got, gotten back to my own college and discussed with a lot of these students. And they everybody gave a heads up, yes, if you come up with something like this, this really works well. And that's when I sort of got that market validated, say about two months time I spent on it, and then looked at uh, building, building again a prototype uh, before going about it. So uh, initially I did an interview and after that I did the whole wireframing and built just the simple designs and showed it to them, say, if something like this was built, would you actually use it? It was both for faculty as well as students and uh, once I got like a good heads up from them, then I actually went ahead and jumped into this uh, in, into starting the company. Okay, so many ideas. Uh, one uh, among them is yours to be potential. Now the next question to you naturally is Abhishek. When people like Amruta are coming out with ideas, when they are uh, 
getting into the market, trying to build in the business, mobile is the focal point. So when you are considering such kind of ideas, what kind of parameters that you ideally consider to invest or maybe incubate such kind of companies? Sure. Um, so uh, first of all, I think every investor, um, whoever is investing in a company, would look at um, the team itself and who are the people in the team. But that's very, very obvious. Right? Beyond the team, I think what we look at is product market fit. Um, how is the idea born? Is an idea just a me too idea where since everybody is doing it, I should be also doing it? Or is there um, a connect with the team or with the founder with that idea? Right? Which is what I think Girish and Amruta are referring to which is the problems that they faced or the need that they had for this particular thing. And they thought that now technology can really change this um, in this world and they can scale through technology. Um, the third thing we look at is, are there enough audience going to be? And that's our research that we do after we have heard the pitch, after we have heard the idea of how much has happened. Have previous similar ideas failed or have been successful? Uh, what is the market for this kind of an idea? Um, and if all of these things, you know, kind of start to match and, you know, we can feel that uh, the entrepreneurs have the passion to build this forward, uh, we, you know, either decide to invest or uh, incubate that startup. So do you think all ideas need some sort of investment at the beginning or we can ask Varad in terms of if it is a self-sustaining mood like a bootstrap model? So what are your views, Varad, on this? So, uh, I, so, the, so exactly, uh, you're asking about how uh, investable ideas are out there, or how do properly I started? So, I'll talk how about my journey. How you started? Yeah, I'll talk about my journey very quickly and uh, see you know how we can sort of uh, not just take the one clear path which everybody sees these these days with respect to funding and raising external capital. Um, the best products, you know, or the best companies are bootstrapped for a while, they, you know, see their product market fit, they're doing the proof of concept and they reach a sustainable level where they, and I mean, you know, that's the best businesses out there, you look at all the global businesses. So for me, it was uh, very, so, you know, sort of a natural progression to start something. I started pretty early, I started when I was 16, uh, and then again started uh, doing what I was doing uh, when I was 22. So uh, when when I started uh, the 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 venture capital industry or angel investment back in 2012 was pretty much non-existent. Uh, you know, I started to make money. I started to build a fundamentally strong business. Uh, I started to build something that uh, can sustain for 10 years, 20 years probably. Um, and and. Once I started doing it, you know, then uh, when we were building the product, when we were building the company, uh, there was a lot of learning that we had, you know, throughout the process. We went through accelerators for that matter. We went through, uh, we have 24 investors on our cap table for, for that matter, right? There's a lot of mistakes we made, but we realized, uh, you know, we were pretty quick to learn that, uh, you know, just raising venture capital is not, is not the right way. There's, of course, you need venture capital to sort of, you know, propel on a very strong J curve or a growth path. Uh, but for me, it was very, it was very clear to build a fundamentally strong business which can make money, which can drive profits, which can you know, uh, you know which which helps everybody in the ecosystem, the employees, the other shareholders, uh, the customers, the vendors, and and money followed. You know, so uh, it's been four years. We've doubled our revenue zero now. We've doubled the team size. Things have happened, things move if you have a very strong focus. Okay. So the idea is set, now you started the first uh, step, the second step, the third step. So the next question to you, Girish, when you think the ideal time for a, an idea or maybe the idea already existing in the market to go to the next level, so when you need the funding, so at what stage you approached or maybe what is your observation of when we need to approach? See, in our case, uh, what we did was like uh, Bharat said, we actually uh, took our idea from idea stage till the, uh, from an idea stage till the proof of concept. We also put our own money to make it work at the first level. So uh, when you do that, you are also, it's al always you're learning all the time. So it's not like just an idea that gets funded. I think nowadays ideas don't get funded. I think you need to <laughs> reach a certain uh, 
maturity with your idea, make it available to market, see if actually people are coming on board, are people either interacting or engaging with your app, and then see whether you can make even one rupee from that app, whether it's from ads or in-app purchase or whatever you may have. If some either engagement or activity is happening on that app, that means you're doing something right. At that okay. stage is when uh, you should go, I believe, for to meet investors. Of course, angel investors or your friends and family type investors are always, I mean, available, I'm sure, at some level to give you that first monies that you might need. Uh, but then to go to a structured investor or a Series A round, we went for our Series A round nearly uh, about a year after everything was in, in, in place. So uh, it was in early 2012 that we had our Series A from uh, Kalari Capital in Bangalore. And uh, even then we met about at least 20 VCs. Okay. Uh, most of them thought, uh, most of them at that time didn't have an iPad or a smartphone. So they were like, what are you talking about? Most of them are saying we are happy reading in paper. Uh, but today I think it, uh, they would uh, beg to differ saying, you know what, most of that billions of people are moving away from uh, paper into uh, digital media. So I think the right time in our mind, at least what we did was we, we kind of made it work, made version one, uh, saw people who were actually buying and then uh, went to meet a bunch of investors and then, then of course, then you can choose the right investor at that point of time. So how you choose the right investor? Uh, I think you need to be uh, lucky as well to get the right investor, both in, from the investor perspective. Whoever says yes first. <laughs> in our case, it was slightly different because we had a strategic investor from the US who wanted to put money on the table. Uh, they were actually going to put more money on the table than the uh, a VC. Uh, but then we chose the kind of a more uh, structured investor route, like went to a VC rather than a strategic investor uh, at that point. So I, I'm sure, uh, like he said, most people will may say yes to the first guy who comes with the money. But our case was slightly different. We had a choice, and uh, but we ch took less money than we than was being offered on the table. So, which in hindsight was actually a good good thing. I'll just jump in here. Yeah, I'll please. just add one point here. While choosing the right investors, um, I've seen so many companies fail, and I think a lot of us have seen so many companies fail just because of uh, the disagreements between the investors and the founders. And it is happening too often these days. And it's just uh, I think a part. The, pr the problem, the, uh, the, the fundamental problem is uh, that you say yes to the first investors, anybody who gives you money. I have made that mistake. A lot of people, other people make that mistake. It could be seed, seed investors, it could be venture capitalists, it could be at any point. But, uh, you know, meeting more investors and seeing, you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's said so much, but it's actually like dating. It's actually like dating and, it's, you know, once the deal is done, then you're in real marriage. And uh, it, it, if it doesn't, is, isn't a good marriage, then there's definitely going to be chaos. So I would, I would yeah, like sure. to add just for a couple of minutes there is that um, Bharat is absolutely right. What happens, you know, I jokingly said you take the first check and that's what most people do, 90% of the people. But um, if you have really bad investors on the cap table, then that startup is doomed. Um, uh, more people on the cap table is an expensive proposition. You have to keep people on the cap table uh, a cap table as a set of investors who have invested in you. Uh, you have to keep people who we can, you can actually relate to uh, and sync up with. Uh, because when things are going all right, everybody will love you for it. But things are going downhill, um, the real colors of the people will show up. Right? So if you don't sync up with anybody and because they're part of some group and they are investing, I now tell a lot of my startups to not raise money from just groups and investors they have never met. Meet all the investors that are going to be sitting on your cap table. Think, uh, you know, and, and talk to them about their business and their, uh, you know, philosophy of investing in you. Um, and if you can sync with that theory, if the philosophy meet, then take that money, otherwise don't. So good insights for you, Amrutha, when you plan out the next level of expansion. So definitely you should get in touch with all of these guys. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, when we, uh, okay, so uh, we got the investment and we, uh, as uh, very um, ideally mentioned by, uh, very uh, rightfully mentioned by Giris that choose your investor wisely. So when you are choosing your investor, you already have given what, uh, what kind of, you know, understanding that you need to have with the, aligning with the investor from the very beginning. So uh, you, at T-Labs, you are having almost 100 plus companies in your portfolios. 50 yeah. plus. Yeah. So 
when these companies are coming to you, so what kind of what kind of uh, mentoring that you provide, or what kind of uh, disadvantages you think they are having, which they need to overcome, so that they can come up to the level of your expectation and they can get the required funding from you. So uh, I think, see, in a very very nutshell, in a very short time, uh, what I'll tell you is that ecosystem for uh, entrepreneurs to grow is very important. And you see that in the Valley versus India, yeah. right? That ecosystem is being built here. Uh, now government is also jumping into it and they're creating programs so that aspiring entrepreneurs can get into it. So in very short, what accelerators do is shrink down the ecosystem around the startups, right? Whether it's capital access to a very early capital so that you can experiment, access to some set of great mentors who have been there, done that, uh, created successful companies and also failed. Um, and access to partners like you know AWS or Google who are providing you tools so that you can clearly fast get on to the bandwagon and start to experiment rather than building the application for the next six months. Yeah. Right? So we just shrink that ecosystem and bring that together to entrepreneurs so that entrepreneurs who are deserving can quickly build to a scale um, where they are, you know, fundable. And and the reason I say that they are fundable is because now we work in an equity model, right? Okay. So, uh, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, building or bootstrapping a business is, uh, you know, bad. You can build a business, you can bootstrap, but, you know, if you are, for profit accelerators will only support, which will lead to a goal, you know, which will get funded at a seed investments or a series A investments, right? Okay. So, we have a very strict goal setting for all of our startups that you have to hit that goal. Now, to do that, you have to run various experiments. Okay. Fail fast, get to the successful experiment, and move on. And we help with our expertise internally, you know, with product market fit, user experience, uh, usability in design, uh, as well as figuring out how do you scale from 1,000 downloads to, let's say, 100,000 downloads in the next okay. four to five months. Okay, cool. So how, uh, how approachable you are to the audience, uh, I'm sure uh, there must be, uh, many of them would be looking for, they have some ideas and they must be looking for some sort of investment. How approachable T-Labs is? We are very, very approachable. Uh, you know, our emails, IDs are up there on our website. Uh, we now take monthly applications, so you can fill up our applications by going on T-Labs. We are always an apply button where you can reach out to us. So all the emails get to us. Up. Reaching through emails is actually bad. You know, you have to reach through application because then we can keep track of it. Every at the end of every month, we look at all the applications and uh, do interviews. We, in a week, we conduct at least 30 odd interviews uh, between the entire team members. Thank you, Giris. Like in personal life, you are a marathon runner. Yeah. In the similar fashion, like the way we have discussed in the morning, you are really for a big, long race here in your space, digital. Uh, content uh, consumption space which you are trying to rewrite. So, uh, if given a scenario, if you would be asked to mentor, what kind of advice that you will be giving to the upcoming people with brilliant ideas in Indian ecosystem? I am not talking global, global is a different ball game. India, these guys have really changed the market, T-Labs. Like them, there are so many other uh, incubators across or maybe accelerators across the country. So, what kind of advice or maybe what kind of mentorship that you would like to give to the Indian ecosystem, people like Amruta or maybe say in future Bharat or maybe some people from the audience. So I think um, one of the important things is uh, I think to, to find the right need that is there in the market and then put 500% of your effort into that, right? Uh, thousand percent, I can put how many of a percent but you should eat, breathe, live, speak, sleep, only that, right? Like he said, it's like dating to find an investor but your business is more than your wife. I mean, I shouldn't tell this. My wife might be listening at some point. But uh, if that is the case, I would see that that focus that you have in building that business, taking it to whatever level, then of course a lot of factors like luck can all play into everyone's, whether you, uh, whether you're Bill Gates who got kicked out of uh, college or got out of uh, IBM kicked you out and then you made a product uh, called Windows, that is luck in some fashion. But if he didn't believe, or if, if anyone didn't really put 200 or 500 percent of effort, uh, and then everyone sees today in the, only the successful startups, right? You'll see in Indian ecosystem, maybe a Flipkart, you'll see, uh, I don't know, all the, all the big names that you see. 
you don't see that for that one flip card about 1000 flip cards died right so we need to hey, try to be that one but we need to really uh, not get disheartened and really focus and there's always for the right idea for the right traction or for the tr right business there's always uh, money going to follow but i think whether like the other gentleman was talking about to apps to do good maybe the people who like the country of bhutan i think doesn't have gdp but has a health uh, True. product True. Uh, i mean happiness product so i think people get uh, kicks out of various things and people should follow their passion i mean many people have told that but i think really need to be in that space meet the everyone in that space and make it work so let me condense that yeah. you know, what he's saying is believe in yourself and be obsessed about your customers that's it so always isn't it that always the uh, business objective of uh, any and every domain in this world deal in the past now in in future i think customer will be the central focal point for everyone and i think mob so mobile is the there are many many distractions like investors yeah. you know and uh, money and everything but if you believe in yourself and be obsessed about your customers you will make progress see one of True. the things that is different between apps and startups in today's world vis-a-vis -vis before is earlier you had 20 years to make a company and make it work yeah. today in 2 years if nothing happens then i i don't know what what is happening if you didn't get funded if you didn't become successful so that time frame has really shortened in terms you can still run a company 20 years down the line and be very profitable and and that but that's not really what everyone's trying to do right now they're so trying you to really need to be fast you were saying you really yeah, everything is fast. changing so fast technology is changing fast so it's so not the big behave. that is the small it is the fast that is the slow you were saying that no, you have to innovate that's what i'm innovate. saying you need to really because unless you're obsessed you will not innovate you want to see how better to make how better to make see it one taking an example interfaces and technology change very fast if ipad hadn't come and he hadn't guessed that ipad is going to be the key where people will read magazine he would have left behind right yeah. so you have to move according to technology and move according to time in fact people who are aspiring to be entrepreneurs what i tell them and this is from a book uh, you know how google works by eric smith yeah. is that you have to keep thinking ahead 6 months to a year and figure out and hang out with people who have ideas about how technology will change people's life right. and how interfaces and you know user experience will change people's life and do that get into those industries All right uh, we have no time, I think. Uh, so mm, we'll take two questions from the audience. If the audience would like to ask uh, the question to the panelists, they have already experimented. They are doing really good in their own domains. Any question from the audience? Yes, please. Uh, so it's clear that one has to find, identify the problem which a consumer faces, that there's a need gap. But how to validate it that this is going to work? So what are the various methods to use to say, oh, yeah, this idea is going to become big. So test, how to test it out properly before going further? I think the first is once you think there's a need, I think you yourself should self-validate whether this is something that you would use or people around you would use. Like yeah. she said, she, I think she's met hundreds of students. Uh, because like, for example, in my case, I'm 41 and I think I'm too old to be in the startup business at some level uh, because all the kids these days are doing very different things than what I would do. My kids are doing even more different things than what those 15 need. So I think the need in your mind should be there and you should have some gut feel on the fact that this could work and then you need to put all your efforts into that. And also, you know, data talks. So it's very important to, I think, uh, one of the things that I've seen with a lot of successful companies is um, that uh, there's a lot of validation in their own minds and their own trust that they have and uh, while building the product, you know, or uh, before even starting to actually code or whatever in a tech startup, I actually build the product. There's a lot of R&D that they do at their own ends. Uh, there are several ways to improve a product. For example, social, right? There's several new products coming out every day. Uh, you know, you could beat them, beat your competitors on the pricing front or the operational front or the branding front. You can do a lot of stuff, right? But, but successful startups actually spend a lot of time, uh, and this is what I learned, you know, uh, after actually starting something and uh, throughout the journey, I've seen that people validate a lot in their own minds and the data talks. So basically doing a lot of example, for example, uh, you could integrate Google Analytics very early on, uh, even while your you know, product is in, is in testing stages, for example, or there's a lot of data collection that you can do at your own end within your own networks. 
Uh, and then I think the real test comes when uh, you launch the product and you see what's the kind of virality that product is getting. I mean, I'm not saying you reach 2 million users in 2 months or whatever, but there's, there has to be some sort of growth metrics involved in what you're doing and there has to be uh, feedback that, you know, it's a system wherein feedback comes in automatically to you. And when all of this is there, you realize that, okay, this is working or this is not working, constantly talking to your customers. So I think all of this uh, helps. I think uh, to add on to one more point, I think uh, a regular interaction with the with the customers will be the really key to success. And you need to understand what are the upcoming trends, like well uh, mentioned by Abhishek. So, for example, we at Cricket HQ we started as a scoring app, cricket scoring app only on mobile devices. Down the line a year, we suddenly got lots of responses from various governing councils across the globe to really build up a platform, a digital platform. So it is the customer who has really compelled us to go to the next level. So when we also realized that in a year, if we are covering 2 million matches, so the humongous amount of data that we are actually building up should be definitely monetized or maybe should be there in a platform which everyone can access. So for example, uh, we really have done something uh, fantastic with uh, New Zealand Cricket Board or maybe Austrian Cricket Board. So. The point is you really need to understand what the need of the market and what your customers or your next level of customers, your prospects are looking for. Yeah. I hope that suffices. Yeah, I mean, just to add one point to it, uh, I mean, if you look at what are the tools that you could use, you could actually conduct surveys uh, in terms of closed user groups and also extended user groups. You, if you know who your customers are going to be, please do talk to them. Spend as much time as possible. You can take two months, three months. But if you get that piece right, your product will definitely be much better. Uh, you can run surveys around if you're thinking of building certain features into your product. Will that actually be used? Otherwise, then it's not going to be used, right? Also, whenever you start a business or whenever you have an idea, you have a lot of assumptions. When, while doing your surveys or while talking to your customers, ensure that all your assumptions, assumptions are checked. Like, okay, I'm assuming this, will this be used, etc. So I think spending more time on that would definitely help. Thank you so much, panelists. Thank you. Thank you.